pomegranates are blooming, which means Rosh Hashanah is coming. Today we're talking about covering our hair as a Jewish woman and different styles. Really bright. Uh... <laughs> and as you can see, pomegranates, they have crowns and the Jewish women see their hair covering as their crown. So let's talk more about that as I answer your questions. You're Stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna do a hair wrap with something we have around the house that is not a scarf. This is a shirt, so. One, two, three, four. So why, why do we cover our hair? It's a mitzvah, it's a commandment from God to the Jewish women to cover their hair after they're married. Before, it doesn't matter. After, there's a special light that comes down the chuppah that's so, so holy and so, so bright that to contain it, we cover it. So, as we know, hair has a lot of energy in it, a lot of sensual energy, so we keep it just for a husband. And we're not covering to cover, we're covering to reveal. Here you are. Here I am. So when other people see us, they're not distracted always by our hair, they can see our heart and our souls. Okay, you can have some like this. These, these are like pretty crazy. <laughs> this one I wear more at Shabbat. Let me know if you want me to do a Shabbat hair tutorial. I wear totally different um, tickles, hair coverings on Shabbat. So this one, I would do this. Okay, I have another question asking me, where does this idea of covering the hair come from, Judaism? Okay, first of all, a lot of you are, are commenting, your grandma covered your hair, your mom covered your hair. It was always a thing. <laughs> Women still in Russia, right, they cover their hair. Even in America, right, they had like the, the presidents and all the wigs. It was a thing, it was just natural. Okay, so the source of this in Judaism, it's called a sota, when a woman is unfaithful. And they had her, the sages of the time, take off her head covering. It was a way that she was very embarrassed because this is like part of her clothes. You know, when you're covering something like your clothes, you feel naked without it. So this is a part of me actually that I feel extremely uncomfortable if it's uncovered <laughs> even with my mom like I cover my hair I don't know it's something I don't know what it is but it's extremely sensitive so anyway so what they did was she uncovered the hair and it was embarrassing so this is the source of it that a Jewish woman covers her hair okay so this is how I would usually wear this one it's bright but it's but it's not like crazy bright the way I think I'd put it in the front <laughs> but this one's fun I'm not bow up top as you can tell, I like bright colors, so, <laughs> okay. Hey, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. We're married, it's so exciting. It really is. Oh my gosh, oh my phone, sorry. Okay. Here you are. Here I am. Are you excited to cover your hair now that you're married? Now that I'm married, I'm so excited to cover my hair. I, I saw that your viewers had a question for you. Oh few yeah? Questions for you. Who are my viewers? That's like that's like seven years in in, in the future. You're so smart. Right. A viewer asked if I was excited asked if I was excited to cover my hair. And the answer is yes. I was very excited to cover my hair after I got married. It means I have no more bad hair days. I can match my scarves with my outfit. I can get new hair and scarves every day if I want. I'm excited to cover my hair. It's just like, you know, you put a ring on it, right? Well, you know, it's like, how's your ring? Oh my gosh, let me see your ring. You just got married, it's so exciting. So here is our ring. It's our crown. Just like the pomegranates have crowns, like I said. This is the Jewish people's crown for a woman. Come on, let's do this again. Also, women go around in um, these, these beanies a lot. I don't do it so much, but it's great. Easy, okay, I'm gonna have two tickles. I'm gonna tie them together at the end. See, at the end right here, I'm gonna put it in the back, okay? Now I'm gonna take one, this is what I do sometimes. I'm not a professional, I just do this, okay? <laughs> you put it, oh, okay, so this is, see? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, go like that. And you take the other side here. Okay, now I'm going to twist these together. Come on, let's twist again, like we did last 
in the rest of the world you have a bachelorette party right like people take off their clothes but in judaism you put on your clothes <laughs> in judaism we have something called a tickle party with women come together for the new soon to be bride and they put on uh they show her how to cover her hair they get her some tickles and some scarves and hats it's like a whole thing and it's a whole party and it's a spiritual thing we, your friends bless you and my mom was there it was very special and very very um meaningful so that was our bachelorette party <laughs> hair covering party this is a like a renaissance look i feel like <laughs> i th i did this in the past a lot but i don't really do the same way good fun for shabbat this is fringe not my hair it's like it's on my hair okay and this is a fun look with from the back <laughs> like videos like this dip the thumbs up in some honey subscribe i'd love to see you again and i thank you guys so much Yum. These pomegranate breads are super easy to make and they're fluffy and they're so much fun. Awesome decor for your Rosh Hashanah table and all ages will love it. about growing up. On the Rosh Hashanah night, we eat specific foods and we say blessings over them and bless each other for a sweet new year. Every Hebrew word is similar to another word that we can bless each other with. So I made a graphic design right here of all the blessings, what they correspond to. Also questions like, say for the pomegranate, I think I wrote, what seed are you gonna plant this new year to make it sweet? We can all go around the table and ask each other questions and interact and get deeper in the Rosh Hashanah dinner. So you can print that up, the link is below. I also do art and I create some Rosh Hashanah cards. Shana Tova. It's a set, so you can also get those and send it to your friends and family and make everyone a happier and sweeter Rosh Hashanah. Okay, I used to have like tons of cute hats. I don't really anymore, but this is one. It's good in the summer to keep the sun away. <laughs> Hey, I have a question from Carly Factor, one of my best friends in California. She just had a baby, Mazel Tov. She asked, hello, when could you have your flowing locks not covered? But it's funny, they're not so flowing anymore and I don't bleach my hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and so when can I when can I let my locks flow? Actually, I can let it flow at home with my kids. I usually have it covered sometimes, and sometimes I just want to breathe, and that's fine. The worst is when I have surprise guests at my house. So if you don't have anything else, that's fine. I mean, you can really cover your hair with anything. <laughs> so let's do this one. Let's try it. I never tried it before, but this is a cardigan. I put it like this, and then I probably tie it. Not tie it, but just in the back like that. And I think I would go like this here, because just to keep it in place. Okay, I'm just gonna see. That's why it's all about the styling at the end, right? So you tuck this in here. So here's a question from trying to be just me. She says, I, I like to keep my hair covered. I'm wondering what happens if a woman divorces. Does she continue to cover or does she uncover? Technically speaking, even an unmarried woman who's already been married needs to continue covering her hair because she still has that light. But many from women- From the chuppah? Yeah, from the chuppah, still have, have the light from the chuppah. But, uh, but many women will go to get special permission from a rabbi to uncover their hair so they can look 
like they were back in the, in the dating, dating market. Time, the dating market. So they can get married again. Cool. Well, hi, hi. Fine. All right. To our wedding day. Okay, so this is a shirt. So again, just look around, see what you have, have fun with it. You know, you don't always have to like go online and buy stuff, you know? Just look around in your closet, see if you have nice leggings, which is crazy, I know. Nice shirts, which is crazy, I know, but not that crazy. And just do it. Thank you so much for being here today. It's so much fun. You guys all mean the world to me. Every comment you have is a gift to me. Uh, you write from your heart and I appreciate it. It goes to my heart. I can't be more thankful for you. I have new videos coming up about Rosh Hashanah, things we can cook, things we can think deeper into. So may you guys have a wonderful day. May God bless us that everything we'll do will be very sweet and we will reveal our, our true and awesome selves to our loved ones. And may God always bless us with sweet, happy days. Happy days. Okay. <laughs> See you guys soon. No, because I look a little crazy. you fine. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Hey, what are you doing? I'm drying over this. Today we're gonna go, <clears throat> today, today we're gonna... Oh, tell you when. And here's a question. Um, what's your name? I'm trying to be just me. Let's take that. Just a second, just a second. Give it to me. Let's do that. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> in here, so. No, no, don't <laughs> Okay, great. Do I say anything else? I'll post some videos here you guys can see between now and the next upload. You guys are the best. You're beautiful. You're beautiful.